morning. Welcome as we gather together in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome family and friends. We are delighted to have you with us here on this Reformation Sunday and Confirmation Sunday. And we are delighted to have you worshiping with us to celebrate the good news that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Just a few announcements before we get started. First, I've been asked to announce that there will be no quilting on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, but there will be for the following two, twos, two Tuesdays. Boy, that's hard to say. Um, and then pickup for the quilts will be on Wednesday, November 16th. So no quilting this Tuesday, but the following two Tuesdays. You got it. Um, also, um, the funeral for George Boyd will be Tuesday at 2 p.m. here at Emanuel. And we send our love and support and encouragement to Susan and the family at this loss. We envelop them in God's grace and peace and ask God to hold them close to God's heart. We are so excited today that we will celebrate with Mary Ellen Bridges and Emily Lawson, their affirmation of baptism, their confirmation. This has been, believe me, a long time coming. Um, Emily started, I don't know, 16 years ago. Um, seriously, they have been in confirmation with me uh, for five years. Um, and it's only a three-year program, uh, but due to COVID and all of the issues surrounding COVID and Zoom meetings and all of that kind of stuff, it has taken us a long time to get to this point. And it is a delight and my honor uh, that on, uh, on this day, on this Reformation Day, we celebrate with them their affirmation of baptism, their confirmation uh, and I can honestly say that I am truly honored um, that these are very, very special young ladies who have tolerated me way longer than anyone should have to tolerate me in confirmation. Um, and I'm honored that uh, they are my last confirmation class. Um, and uh, what a delight it is to celebrate with them this accomplishment in their faith life. Just a reminder, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. And if you have not signed the sheet to have people listed for remembrance next Sunday, uh, please do that. It's in the North Edition. Um, also, next Sunday, All Saints Sunday, will be my last Sunday with you. And there will be a time of refreshment uh, and reception immediately following the service next week. I think there's also a time change this week uh, on Saturday. Is that correct? And my, yeah. So you get an extra hour to sleep to rest up for it. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? If not, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship, the silent prayer, and the prelude.
May we rise for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading comes from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people." 
No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from the third chapter of Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. 
What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Are there children to come forward for children's time? We're so glad to have you here today. Come on up. I'm Pastor Mike. Welcome. Hayden, come on. Hayden. Come here. Come here, bud. All right. I am so glad that you are here. We're going to try something today. And, and hey, you're perfect. Come here. Come here, buddy. It's hard to be still, isn't it? It really is hard to be still. And one of our lessons today, it said... God said, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. That's what God tells us. But sometimes we're just running around like a crazy person, right? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's just like that. And, and sometimes, and, and these, these two helpers are, are going are gonna to come and... Yeah, isn't that pretty? All right, so they've been wanting to do this for five years. So, so, okay, just, all right, wait a minute. Hey, no, okay, that's a little, whoa, yeah, what, huh, come on, oh, wait, wait a minute, what, are, what, are, hey, hey, all right, little, what, wait a minute, what, what? Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Um, um, okay, um. What? Wait, what? Hey, I, I can't be, I can't really be, be still here. Because you're, you're tiny. Hey, yeah, what, what are you laughing at? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. You have to be still because God is God. I have to be still because God is God? But, but I'm all tied up. Wait a minute. So if I'm still... Okay. Oh, what happened when I was still? What happened? The rope fell off, didn't it? Yeah, when I'm still, the rope came off. Why don't we scoot over so they see when when we're fighting and, and wrestling, that's that's not helpful, is it? But when we're still, God promises to be present with us, and God loves us more than anything in the whole world. And, oh, be gentle, be gentle. All right? So today we are reminded how much God loves us, and God has called us to be God's own. Let's gather around this baptismal font. Stick our fingers in that water. It's not even too, it's not too cold today. Sometimes it's really cold. Hayden, come here. I'll hold your hand. Come here. Whoop. Oh, boy, big guy. We're going to stick our fingers in the water. And you were just here last week, weren't you? You got baptized last week. Oh, we're going to stick. Okay, we're sticking Barbie in there, too. <laughs> All right. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, help us be still. Because we know you love us. You love us more than anything. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now take your wet fingers and go remind someone how much God loves them. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I'll be right back after this commercial message.
Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What a treasure trove of texts for today, any one of which we could do a whole series sermon on. A new covenant announced by God in Jeremiah. Be still and know that I am God from Psalm 46. We are justified by grace as a gift in Romans. And the truth will make you free from John's gospel. But rather than a sermon series, let's look at all of these texts together today and see what they say about the nature of God. Now, don't be anxious. This is going to be the Reader's Digest condensed version, so you can put away your watches. All of the, all of the texts today seem to be predicated on the fact that sin happens. And because of sin, we are a broken people, a broken society, a broken world. I think that we can all admit that we are not the people we really want to be and certainly not the people that God has called us to be. We say that we believe one thing and yet we act counter to that. We say that this is who we are but our behavior belies our words. And the worst part is that we're really good at lying to ourselves. And when we do it for long enough, we begin to believe the lies. We try to reason and rationalize our way around the truth, like a teenager who says, well, everybody's doing it. But in this case, not as a rationalization, but as a realization that we are all in need of a savior, it is true, we are all in the same boat. For as we are reminded by St. Paul in Romans, all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Are any righteous? No, not one. And if we, as the confession in the LBW, Lutheran Book of Worship, reads, are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves, then we are incapable of living in complete harmony with the will of God. Yet God alone has the power to free us from ourselves and the sin that holds us fast. God alone breaks the power of sin and death and offers us new life in and through Christ. And there's nothing that we can contribute to our own salvation. No merit we can offer worthy enough to earn or warrant it. Our new life in Christ is a gift pure gift, a complete, life-giving gift. One of Martin Luther's most significant contributions to the church's reformation was his understanding of grace. We are justified by grace through faith apart from the works of the law, as St. Paul wrote. It's not what we do that saves us but rather what God has done in Jesus Christ, our Lord. God's grace sets us free, period. There can be no boasting, well, I'm a better Christian than you are because I served on the church council. Or I did this good work or I did that good work. Many years ago, someone gave me 
uh, a hanging plaque that reads, God loves everyone, but I'm his favorite. <laughs> yeah, see, we laugh, but how many people secretly think that way? Remember all sin and fall short of the glory of God. When we recognize the enormity of God's sacrifice out of love, not just for you and for me, but for all people, how can we look at another human being another child of God in hatred and disgust? How can we draw imaginary lines where none exist? Did God check our credentials, our belief systems, before Jesus went to the cross, wanting only to save the righteous ones, those who were worthy. No, as we read in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his son, Jesus. God's love has never been contingent upon us, but always about God's overwhelming capacity for love. In other words, God loves because God is love. Check it out. 1 John 4, 8. Today we celebrate the confirmation of Emily Lawson and Mary Ellen Bridges. And this ritual is not so much something that is done to them but rather something that they will affirm has been done on their behalf already, their baptism. Through water and the word, God has claimed them and named them and said, Emily and Mary Ellen, you belong to me, and nothing in all creation can separate you from the love of God. Today, they will affirm their baptisms, claiming their baptisms as their own, <coughs> and living into the covenant that God established with them. This rite, this ritual, invites them even further into the life of the church and into the heart of God, where God's love is revealed to each and every one of you. But think about it. Look at the world into which these two young women are making their professions of faith. They have certainly seen the brokenness of humanity all around them. Hatred violence, prejudice, they abound. A worldwide pandemic stole from them a good portion of the innocence of their youth. Little that they trusted in their young lives remained unshaken. Almost everything has changed. And yet here they are ready to stand before you and God and profess their faith in the one true God. And I'm telling you, we could learn much from them. I have. For in the midst of their anxiety and frustration, they had to lean on something, no, someone that was much bigger than themselves. Believe me, they didn't have it all together. 
They couldn't rely on their own wit and wisdom. They had to trust that somehow God was in control. Somehow God was present in this time. And they have lived the words of the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. And isn't that the kind of faith that we all want to experience? The assurance that God is indeed God. And it is there in the stillness that we can feel the rhythm of God's heart beating for justice and truth with mercy and love. And it is from that place that God speaks us to action. God calling us to continue in his word, to know the truth, and to be set free. Emily and Mary Ellen, family, church family, and friends, the truth of God's love in Jesus Christ has set you free from the bonds of sin and death. And if Jesus sets you free, then you are free indeed. Free to love as Jesus loves. Free to be as Christ to your neighbor. Free to live in the fullness of God's grace. Now and forever. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these sisters, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. I present Mary Ellen Bridges and Emily Lawson, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters who you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and the promises of baptism 
and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I invite the congregation to respond as we profess our faith in the creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made public affirmation and profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and pray for them in their life in Christ? Let us pray. We give you thanks of God through water and the Holy Spirit. You give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to life eternal. Stir up in Emily the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. <clears throat> Stir up in Mary Ellen the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Let us rejoice with these sisters in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God. Together we will give thanks and praise to God. And proclaim the good news to all the world. May we respond with a acclamation and applause. service continues with the prayers. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Keep your church steadfast in your word, reforming God. Deepen our faith and increase our love in Jesus' name. Guide Mary Ellen and Emily to be disciples of your good works. 
further economical dialogue and partnerships and equip us for unified witness and service in the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gather the faithful at the table of your eternal banquet. We give thanks for those who have witnessed to your gracious presence, especially Martin Luther and all who strive to reform and renew the church. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reveal yourself to all who seek you. Empower the hospitality ministries of this congregation to welcome others to your feast of love. Foster generosity in our stewardship ministries to both our congregation and community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Guide leaders of all nations, almighty God. Heal divisions, build trust, and remove barriers that prevent collaboration and cooperation. Bring neighborhoods, cities, and countries together to work for the common good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Come to the aid of the poor, especially those suffering food and water shortages or loss of homes due to natural disasters. Halt the exploitation of the earth's resources and lead us to seek justice and rescue the oppressed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Save from trouble those who struggle with hunger, homelessness, or addiction. Strengthen the overworked and give hope to those who do not have enough work. Console those who are burdened by illness or grief, especially the family of George Boyd, Amanda Pierce, Abby, and all those we name in our hearts before you now. Hear us, O oh God. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with one another.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table before all. Amen. The Lord be with you. to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
May you rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Spirit, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen.
in peace with Christ beside you.